Hi, and welcome to Noble Character Crafts. My name is Amy, and I'm coming to you from eastern Nebraska, where I live with my husband and our five children. Today is Wednesday, May 11th, 2022. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you really enjoy this episode. This is a channel all about my crafty life, and today I have knitting and crocheting to share with you all. You can find me online on Instagram at Noble Character Crafts, and you can get in contact with me through my email at noblecharactercrafts at yahoo.com. I will have links to the places that you can find me in the description box below, as well as the show notes for this episode. I'm hosting a year-long make-along on Instagram called the Make9 2022 Mal, and that's for you to join in the Make9 Challenge, where you choose nine projects that you would like to make this year, make a grid of those projects, and then post it onto Instagram with the hashtag Make9 2022 Mal. And then anytime you post a picture of your progress on any of those projects, or if you finish one of those items, then you can certainly post a picture and include that hashtag as well. And every time that you post with that hashtag, that will enter you to win a prize, which I draw periodically throughout the year. It's never too late to join in. It's just a participatory make along so you can join in at any time and you're not required to finish anything. So I would love for you to continue to join in throughout the year if you haven't already. And thanks to those that have already been participating this year. It's so much fun to see the different projects that you all are working on. I will have a, de a detailed description of the make along in the description box below. If you're not familiar with it or if you want to find out more about it, please don't hesitate to let me know if you have any questions. I have a few finished objects that I'm so excited to share with you all today. The first of which is quite monumental because it has been a work in progress for so long and it is my Ellie cardigan. It is done for now. <laughs> I'm not I'm not 100% sold on the button band for this and how it turned out, but it is definitely wearable and I might keep it as is, but we'll, we will see. It's very warm today. It's supposed to get up into the 90s today here, which is ridiculous for May. <laughs> I certainly hope it isn't, we don't have super hot weather all summer. But anyway, it is hot today, so I won't be wearing this, unfortunately, but I will try it on just briefly in a minute, but I thought I would just hold it up to start with. So this is a pattern by Adel Adelheid, and I have been working on this off and on. I started it in August of last year and then frogged it and started over in October and then put it on hold for a couple of months. But ever since January, I've been working on it pretty faithfully, and still, it's taken me quite a long time to finish it up, but it is a fingering weight cardigan, and it is knit at a pretty tight gauge. My gauge for this is 27 stitches to four inches. And I also added a lot of beading to this project, which you can see throughout all of the lace work, I added beading. So it goes through the raglan increases up here at the top, and then it kind of comes to a point down in the front and then it, the, the lace work is all along the sleeves. So there was a lot of beading that went into this, so that you know, added to the amount of work that went into this project, but I'm just so happy to finally have it done. So I'll try to go through details, though if you've watched my episodes throughout the process of making this, you've heard a lot of details about this project, but I'll just try to go over the details one last time just to make sure I cover everything. So the yarn that I use for this is a fingering weight yarn. It is 100% non-superwash fine merino wool and just it's a bare yarn. I it was not dyed at all. And I ordered this from um, the place where I, when I used to dye yarn, I had this yarn left over from that. So it was just bought in bulk for, you know, to dye on, but I just left this bear. It was knit from the top down, starting with this one by one twisted ribbing. And then it works into this lace work, which is so beautiful. But the back of the cardigan is all done in plain stockinette. I adjusted the pattern quite a bit because when I first started it back in August, I was making the fourth size and it was turning out way too large for me in the neckline. I wanted the neckline to be closer fitting around the neck. And so I decided to make the smallest size 
for casting on stitches, but then I just continued to follow the pattern by doing the increases for the raglan and tried it on until it was fitting me well. So it ended up to be very similar to the fourth size as far as the stitch count once I got, was ready to separate for the sleeves, but the neck fits much higher than it was originally according to the fourth size, if that makes sense. So my neck, the neckline fits a lot tighter than it would normally fit. I used a variety of needles uh, according to my gauge. So for the ribbing, I used a US 2 2.75 millimeter needle. For the main body, I used US 3 3.25 millimeter needles for the knit stitches, but I went down to a US 2.53 millimeter for the purl stitches since my purl stitches are looser than my knit stitches. For the sleeves, I used a 12 inch circular and I went down to a US 2.53 millimeter needle for that even though I was you know, on the right side knitting in the round. But since I was on a small circular, I was knitting a bit looser than I was knitting flat. And then for the ribbing on the sleeves, I went down to a US 1 2.25 millimeter needle. So I used a variety of needles to get the gauge that I wanted. Like I said, I adjusted the pattern and just kind of tried it on as I went to know when to split for the sleeves. My stitch count was very similar to the fourth size, but it wasn't exact. I just kind of did my own thing and, and made it work for me. I did just do, I think only three rows of decreases along the side under the arm. You can kind of see them right here. I just put in, I think three rows of decreases and then decided I didn't really want to have it cinch in too much at the waist. I kind of wanted it to just be straight at the sides. I did not follow the pattern for the length. I just knit it until it was to my, like my hip. You'll see when I try it on where it fits me, but I just kind of wanted it to be shorter. The original pattern is quite long and I wanted it to fit me or lay around my hip area. And then I just did the one by one twisted ribbing for, um, I, I'd say about two and a half inches. Again, I just kind of eyeballed that until it was the right length that I liked. The button bands are knit on as you go, which as I had expressed, I was nervous about because they were laying, they were really wavy before I blocked the cardigan. They were just sitting, they were just, they had a lot of wave to them. And you can see that they're still not laying perfectly flat. There's still a bit of a wave. And you'll also see when I try it on that it's not a perfect, perfectly flat laying button band, but I think it looks nice enough. I may go back and redo it if it bothers me, but I don't think it will bother me. I made my own buttons using the um, Dorset cross wheel button making method, which I will link to a tutorial in the description box below by Gina B. Silkworks that showed me how to make these. That's the tutorial that I have used to make these. And I just used a small copper washer to make these and then the same yarn that I used to make the sweater. And I just love how they turned out. I love how they look with this cardigan. There are 12 buttons total. Um, for the sleeves, I did not follow the directions for that either. I just knit them straight without any decreases until I got to the cuff. And then I knit two together all the way around to decrease and then did a one by one twisted ribbing for 15 rounds for the cuffs. I originally got this all done and blocked it and the sleeves are fitting me so well. And then I tried it on after blocking and the sleeves were like this much too long, like almost five inches, four or five inches too long. <laughs> I was like, what in the world? I couldn't believe that they had blocked so much longer because this is non super wash yarn. But my thought is maybe it was because of so much of the beading in the sleeves might have, might have weighted the sleeves down more than normal. That was the only thing I could think of because I've knit sweaters in this exact yarn before and I've never had an issue with um, the sleeves stretching out too long. 
So anyway, I'm guessing that's what it was. So I had to rip back three total lace repeats, um, which each lace repeat is a little over an inch. You can see from this bead to this bead, that's one lace repeat. So I ripped out three total lace repeats and then re-knit the ribbing. And that was a little stressful because I hate ripping out period, let alone with lace and beading and everything. I was afraid I was gonna totally mess it up, but I was able to manage getting those sleeves ripped out and knit at the correct length. So I'm really happy with how it's fitting now. I did adjust the buttonhole as well. I think in the original pattern, it had a larger buttonhole and I just it did a simple yarn over for the buttonhole instead, which made a smaller buttonhole. And that worked out well. I think that's all of the details for this sweater. So I'll go ahead and try it on so you can see how it fits. So here it is on. I'm so pleased with the length of it. I think it's a really nice length and the sleeves are a wonderful fit now. They were covering up my hands completely when I tried it on after blocking it. I'll go ahead and button it. So, the, so I think the button band looks really nice when it's unbuttoned. You can't really tell that it flares at all. But if I do end up buttoning it, which I, I do actually, I think, which is kind of um, rare, that I do end up buttoning my cardigans a lot, um, probably more than some people. I like wearing it with just a few buttons up here at the top buttoned. I think that looks nice as well. But I do like it buttoned all the way too because then you really get to see the effect of that lace coming to a V, I think, a little bit more. It takes a while to get them all buttoned. The other thing that's so nice, I mentioned last time, but about these uh, Dorset cross wheel buttons is since they're made with the yarn that you are knitting with, they don't slide easily at all. There's just a really nice grip to them so that they don't slip out of those holes easily at all, which I just love so much that, you know, because if you put in metal or plastic buttons, they can just kind of slip out of buttonholes more easily, I think, and your cardigan can come undone. So here it is all buttoned. So you can kind of see it has kind of a little scallopy <laughs> look to it when it's all buttoned up, but I don't think it will bother me too much. It's, you know, it's even, so it's kind of like a Maybe it adds to the lace part of it. I just love it though. It's such a nice fit when it's buttoned up too, I think. It's so warm though. I'm so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> Even though it's only fingering weight, it's so warm today. Anyway, so I won't keep it on long, but you can get an idea of what it looks like. Isn't it pretty? I'm so pleased with it. I'm just so happy I was finally able to get it done. The back is completely plain, so there's not much to see there, but yeah, so you can see like here, I guess it sits right at my belly button line, if that helps at all to know how it, where it's sitting. And I'm just really happy with the fit of it. I think it's really nice. So finally is done and I am so pleased, but I've got to take this thing off now because it's way too hot. <laughs> I was also able to finish this pair of socks that I was working on last time I recorded an episode. And I love how they turned out. I think these are so much fun. I knit these on US zero two millimeter needles. I cast on, I cast on 60 stitches and did a two by one ribbing for about 17 rounds. And then worked a one by one broken rib for the remainder of the sock. So for one round, I did knit one, purl one across or around. And then the following round, I did just knit stitches. And I really love the texture that that gave. It's a fun texture, I think. This beautiful yarn was gifted to me by a viewer of the podcast, Nicole. It is Deborah Norville Collection Serenity Sock Weight Yarn in the Pink Sugar Colorway. It's by Premier Yarns. And it is 50% superwash merino wool, 25% rayon made from bamboo, and 25% nylon. And I just love the colors and how they worked up. The mini that I used for the heels and the toes, which is a slip stitch heel flap and gusset and then a rounded toe, is 
sweet fiber yarn in the smoky lilac colorway and that's an 80% superwash merino 20% nylon base aren't they fun I think they're just so pretty I love them so much thank you again Nicole for your gift of this beautiful yarn I'm so thankful and actually the mini is also a gift from joy um, I mentioned last time that I kept a mini skein set from sweet fiber in the goodies that joy had sent me last year that I had given away that yarn lots of times throughout the year last year for the make along last year anyway I did as always I've included a slip stitch detail along the ball of the foot to reinforce those that area of my sock to prevent getting holes in that area so it's the same type of pattern that I do as on the slip stitch heel flap just worked in the round instead of flat as you would on the heel flap so those turned out really fun I just am so happy with them I think they're beautiful and then I was able to make another pair of socks which I never even showed these as a work in progress on an episode but this is a new yarn that I got from Hobby I purchased a few different skeins from Hobby for I've never uh, purchased any yarn from Hobby before, but I wanted to try out some of their yarns. And this yarn is called Silly Socks. It's a 75% wool, 25% polyamide base, super wash. And it's fingering weight. It's a really, really nice, sturdy yarn. It reminds me of Regia a lot, maybe even Opal, although I don't think I've ever used Opal, but you know, I think it, they're similar that type of yarn where it's just a really nice woolly seems like a really hardy type of yarn I'm really happy with it and I just love the patterning in these they're so much fun oh the colorway for this is just a color number on this label I think it does have maybe there's a name for this colorway online but it's not on the label it's color number four but the repeat I believe is about 14 stripes so I just think they're really fun. I was so happy with how these worked up. They were really fun to make. So for these, I just, um, again, used US Zero two millimeter needles. I did a two by two ribbing for 20 rounds and then just did plain stockinette. I did cast on 64 stitches for these instead of 60 as I did with my other socks. I think that I found with stockinette socks they fit me best if I'm not putting in any type of a ribbing throughout the leg they fit me best if I use 64 stitches but then if I use any type of a pattern that has stretch in it like ribbing does then I like to go down to 60 stitches for the best fit for me for the heels I used a contrast yarn and that is also a gift from Nicole but she gifted me this yarn a long time ago she gave me two 50 gram skeins of yarn that were dyed by amber of makers haven back in the day when she dyed yarn and so this was one of those skeins that nicole had gifted to me and i just thought that the colors went so well with the stripes and this yarn aren't they fun though i'm so happy with how they turned out and they worked up so quickly because i was really excited to see how the pattern would you know work up again you can see the slip stitch detail there on the ball of the foot that I've added again but yeah these are really simple and so much fun to make on to my works in progress since I finally finished my Ellie cardigan I was able to get back to the sunflower afghan that I am making for my niece and her husband they eloped last year and I wanted to gift them a, an afghan as a belated wedding gift. So the pattern I'm using is the Crocodile Stitch Sunflower Square by Caitlin's Contagious Creations. And I am using some Knit Picks yarn, the Mighty Stitch Bulky Weight yarn in three different colors. I am using this dark brown, it's called Bark. I've got a yellow color called Canary, and this light gray is called Silver. 
This yarn is 80% acrylic, 20% superwash wool, and it is a bulky weight, which is different from the original pattern. The original pattern calls for you to use worsted weight, I believe, and I believe the original hook size recommends an H five millimeter hook. I'm using a J six millimeter hook instead to adjust for the thicker yarn. I don't remember where I was exactly last time I showed this blanket, but I um, have made a bit of progress on it. So I have exactly half of it pieced together. I'll go ahead and stand up so that you can see where I'm at at this point. So here is the blanket so far. It's comp it's halfway done exactly at this point. So I'm going to make a total of 12 squares. So it will be four, three by four when it's all done. It's really quite a weighty blanket, as you can maybe tell by the way it drapes. It's heavy already. So hopefully it will still be usable, but it's just such a fun design, I think. Again, I've mentioned this before, but I love it when you piece squares together. See those X's that are being formed in between each square? I love seeing how those kinds of designs appear as you piece uh, an afghan together. Then I also have one more square done and it's waiting to get pieced together with more squares. <laughs> oh, I should mention for this I am adjusting the pattern also in that I'm adding, I'm doing the pattern completely until the last row, which is 13 rounds, I should say, not rows, but 13 rounds total is what the pattern calls for. And I am adding four more rounds, continuing with that same, that, that round 13, I'm just continuing round 13 four extra times to make the squares larger than what they're originally called for. So I'm doing a total of 17 rounds, but I'm just repeating that last round four extra times. And then I am also piecing them together using a whip stitch and only um, sewing that whip stitch through the back loop as I piece those squares together, which I copied from a, the last afghan that I finished it used that method and I really liked how it looked so that's what I'm doing again because I really liked how that finished off the blanket and those it just makes the blanket look really nice um, pieced together in that way so I've got one this is the seventh square and then I'm currently working on the eighth square I'm holding my work in this project bag that I made and here is the square I am working on right now. So I believe I'm on the 14th round. So if you see like this top half here is the size that the square is supposed to be, but again, I'm using thicker yarn and a bigger hook, so it's already bigger than original anyway, but you know, this is just the 13 rounds right here that is called for in the pattern. And right now I'm adding in this 14th round. So this project is going really well. I'm, you know, really getting into the hang of this pattern and not having to look at the pattern quite so much anymore. So that's great. It's really a, an enjoyable pattern. The crocodile stitch on the petals is probably the most tedious part of the pattern. And it's not really, it's fine. It's just a little bit, um, it's not as intuitive, I guess. It takes a little more uh, concentration to know where you're putting the stitches and you're going into the back of each Lay, you're kind of crocheting into the, it's a back loop stitch, double crochet. <laughs> Not explaining that well at all, I'm sorry. But anyway, that's the only part that I find a part where I need to concentrate just a little bit more, but it's really not bad. I mentioned when I first started this pattern quite a while ago, actually, because I had put this project on hold, but I had mentioned that the pattern, I don't find it super clear and I've made a lot of notes in my copy of adjustments that I've made to suit me and things that I like. I have a lot of crochet experience, so that makes a difference probably. I've been crocheting since I was like 18, 19, somewhere around in there. So um, I've been crocheting for a long time and I 
am able to make adjustments to patterns pretty easily, I guess, and I have my preferences on how I like to do certain stitches and things. But I, and I, I haven't gone through the pattern with a fine tooth comb to figure out if the things that I've changed are mistakes or just I'm misunderstanding what she wrote, but I didn't find the pattern super clear, just as a preface, in case you are a beginner crocheter and are interested in this pattern, I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner, just because I found it a little bit confusing and I've had a lot of experience. So just know that. <laughs> okay, I have also cast on two new pairs of socks. The first one I'm holding in this Japanese knot bag that my friend Tina made for me and gifted to me. And I'm making a pair of socks for Tina with some yarn that she gave to me to knit her some socks. <laughs> she was gifted this yarn, I believe, by one of her daughters. It's called Panda Soy. It's fingering weight. It's called, uh, it's from, by Crystal Palace Yarns. And the makeup is 49% bamboo, 33% soy, and 18% elastic nylon. And it's in these really pretty, mainly burgundy colors. And then there's uh, spots of orange, a uh, yellowish green color, and a uh, blue that runs through it. And I am, again, using US 0 2 millimeter needles. All of the needles that I use are Chow Gu Red Lace. I cast on... 64 stitches and did two by two ribbing for 20 rounds again. And I'm just knitting plain stockinette for these. And they're working up really beautifully. I love how this yarn has worked up. When I did the ribbing, you can see it was kind of pooling a little bit in a kind of a strange way, <laughs> but it looks kind of cool too. But I like, I especially like how it's working up throughout the leg here. I'm not planning on putting any contrast yarn in for the heels or anything, so I'm kind of curious to see how the yarn will work through the heel flap and gusset and then the, you know, the gusset decrease stitches. I may get a bit of pooling throughout that area of the sock, but they, um, I think they'll be cute no matter what. Since this yarn makeup is so unique, I don't want to put in a contrast heel in a different type of yarn. I want to keep it all in this yarn since I don't have anything that's comparable to this with the makeup of the different fiber in this yarn. But I love how they're turning out. So, so pretty. I think she'll like them a lot. So I'm excited to have those, uh, working on those. I haven't made Tina a pair of socks in a long while, but she is so appreciative of all of the socks that I make for her. So I'm happy to get another pair of socks going for her. And I have another pair of socks that I am holding in this uh, bag that I got from My Creative Frenzy on Etsy. And I have really enjoyed the pair of shorty socks that I probably showed off a couple of episodes ago that I had finished. And I've been enjoying wearing those now that the weather has warmed up. So I, wanna make, I wanted to make another pair of shorty socks in the same way that I made those. So I've started a pair but just on the ribbing right now. So I cast on 60 stitches, again, US 0 2 millimeter needles, and I'm doing a two by one ribbing, and I'll do that for 15 rounds total. I had a knot in the yarn that I couldn't get out, and so I had to cut my yarn, so that's why you see these extra tails here. Um, but I'm just using this charcoal colored yarn which is from a mini skein set that I got from Hobby Lobby. It is by Yarn B. It's called Pigment and Fiber and it came with five or six minis in it that are 25 grams each I think. Somewhere around 20 or 25 grams each. The colorway for the mini skein set is called Fridays in Florence. And I'm using the dark charcoal color from that mini set. The makeup of that yarn is 60% acrylic, 20% wool, and 20% nylon. So I'm curious to see, I've never used that uh, makeup of yarn before in socks. So I'm curious to see how they will wear, but 
there is the little ball that it comes it comes in at this ball which I kind of want to rewind because it's so loosey-goosey <laughs> it's just making it's kind of a mess anyway I um, also grabbed this one which I already kind of wound up because it also was falling apart I mean I just I didn't wind it up nicely but you can see it's not in a nice ball anymore because it was coming undone anyway this is also from that mini skein set uh, this deep teal color I may use this but I'm not exactly sure if I'll use it or not the main color that I'm going to be using for these socks is a yarn that I dyed myself and I called this colorway Eagle so the base is a light gray and then it has um, it's I don't even know what to say anymore. It's been so long since I dyed yarn. It's a uh, hand painted, I guess, with teal and charcoal colors. <laughs> this is, I think, only like 40 grams or 30 grams. I can't remember now, but the socks that I made, the shorty socks that I made that I'm duplicating, weighed a total of 50 grams. So that's why I'm using these contrast colors to make up the difference but the main body of the sock will be made using this yarn. <laughs> this is on a fingering weight, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon base. I just have five more rounds to knit on the cuffs for these, and then I'm not sure what I'll do for the heels. I can't decide if I wanna use this charcoal color for the heels or one of the other colors I showed you. I'm not sure what I'll do for the heels. Just play it by ear, I guess. So those are all of the projects I have to share with you. That's it for today. Pretty sure. Yeah, that's everything. I hope that you all enjoyed watching this episode. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you all are doing really well. And thank you again so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I would appreciate that so much. Thanks again for joining me today. Bye-bye.